Um, we will start shortly, but uh, before we do, uh, there was one question about uh, the uh, again the impacts of uh, COVID and uh, the work of uh, the IKO Council. I would like to give the floor to um, our chief, uh, Mr. Tetsuya Tanaka, uh, to provide an answer to this uh, question. So, Tetsuya, the floor is yours. Thank you, and good uh, good morning, right, in Asia Pacific, uh, everybody, and welcome welcome to the CCR specific training to Asia Pacific region. Um, for the question about the well overall impact of this on the ongoing situation COVID-19 to aviation, um, as Sister is briefly mentioned, there will be some discussion in the upcoming council session, May and June. But the, what's going on? Well, just to be clear that, that uh, there was no specific council decision in the last session in March about how to do this or that because of the current situation. What was sort of agreed and understood by the council in the last session is we need sort of a flexibility, for example, in terms of how the IKEO and the secretariat is you know, doing their capacity building. And this is exactly one of the examples that the, the CCR, since we had, had to postpone the face-to-face -face, um, this year's COSIA regional seminars, as an initial shot, the Secretariat is organizing the CCR remote online training to, to each region. So we need this kind of flexibility on how to make sure the implementation of COSIA, one aspect, but also as, as already pointed out, how to do the baseline of the COSIA because 2020 emission might be going down. And also we also had of the, how to make sure the compliance for the implementation of the MRB system. So those are the questions that the, the upcoming council is gonna start discussion. At the same time, I would say that I would inform that, the, the, that we have a committee the specific committee, IKO committee on aviation environmental protection, probably some of them, a lot of people are aware of the CAPE, Committee on Aviation Environmental Protection. The CAPE is, uh, has started initiating uh, its work on how and by when that this expert group could assess the, the impact of the COVID-19 on aviation, aviation traffic and the emission level this year. But at the same time, how and by when that this expert group can assess the recovery of their emission and what would be the implication of the change of the trajectory of the emission to, to the COSIA design and the implementation of the COSIA. So there are a lot of consideration needs to be taken care on the impact to the aviation, but also the COSIA implementation. So, that kind of discussion has been started at the expert level and the initial discussion at also the council level will be taken and by May, May, June session, upcoming session. At this stage, we cannot speculate of the, any um, discussion or the result of the discussion at the council level, but as soon as any indication or the, the decision being taken, take, taken by the council, we will uh, immediately inform all the COSIA focal points and state user. That's what that's uh, everything that I can say at this stage. Thank you so much for the, the, the question, and I'm gonna um, put back to Stereos to to continue the CCL training. Thank you. Thank you, Tetsuya, and um, hello again uh, from me. Uh, welcome back to the segment two of our remote training on uh, the CCR. Uh, for this second segment, we will focus on two different aspects of the CCR. The first one is how to report CO2 emissions uh, to ICAO, how to upload information and submit information to ICAO. And uh, for the, uh, the second part, we will be looking into what is a script request and how you can initiate one. So I will do the first presentation and uh, then Ji Yung will take over for the service request for the second part of this uh, second segment. So CO2 emissions, 
shifts uh, to, uh, to ICAO. Before I show you how to do that uh, using uh, the CCR, I just would like to remind you that by 31st of August 2020, states are required to submit CO2 emissions for the year 2019 to ICAO. And this is what we are working towards, um, you know, moving into um, in terms of training and making sure that all of your Corsia focal points are familiar of, with how to do that using the CCR. Later this year, by 30th of November, uh, the, uh, the second deadline for this year, 30th of November, and this is related to airplane operators and verification bodies. We are not going to discuss this in this remote training. You will have the opportunity to hear more about this when we have the in, in-person workshops uh, later this year in the different regions. And uh, they're going to give you more information about how to do that, the airplane operators and verification bodies, and also provide more information on the CO2 emissions if you so uh, wish. So uh, Ji Yung mentioned earlier about the data flow process. This is uh, one of the most important aspects of the CCR. It is very important for all of you to understand how information flows between the different users of the CCR. So before again, I, I show you how to do it. I'm going to walk you through again the different steps of uh, the whole process, uh, just to make sure that it's clear in your mind, you know, how you go from uh, nothing to actually submitting to ICAO. So for, um, for a specific year and uh, for a specific, you know, set of CO2 emissions, you have to create a year records in the CCR. And I hope you remember from the previous slides that you saw only a Corsia focal point is able to create a year record in the CCR. So the Corsia focal point initiates this action, creates a year record. By default, the status of this year record is set by the system as in progress. And this means that both the Corsia focal point and any other state users, they can add, they can edit, they can delete information from um, this year record. And again, we understand that not all states will have the luxury of having more than one person working on Corsia. So although we are presenting this year as uh, you know, both Corsia focal points and state users, we understand that in some cases, there will be no state users. There will have to be a Corsia focal point because otherwise the whole thing doesn't work. But the system can work perfectly without state users. And again, this is an option. Those states that uh, they have more than one person working on Corsica, they can actually nominate other people to be state users and assist the work of the Corsica focal point. So once the information and data has been inserted in the CCR, then the state user can change the status of the year record to complete. And by doing so, there will be an automated email notification, which is going to go to the Corsia focal point, informing the Corsia focal point that the state user has changed the status to complete. And then it will be the turn of the Corsia focal point to review the information. Part of this review is also, as DU mentioned, um, additions and deletions of the data that uh, the, the Corsia focal point needs to, uh, needs to do. However, um, if there are revisions, and for those revisions, the Corsia focal point feels that the state user has to insert more information, do those revisions, then the Corsia focal point can change the status of the year record back to in progress. And then an automated email message will be received by the state user that the status has changed, so more information and data is needed. And again, uh, the process will continue by changing again to complete uh, the review um, and then again the Corsia focal point will look at the new information but if there is no need for any more revisions and everything is you know as it should be then the information can be submitted to ICAO and to submit to ICAO basically what you have to do as a Corsia focal point is to change the status of the year record to ready when you do that, then there is another email notification 
which goes to the IKO super user to check the year record for format problems. And again, I want to emphasize this, that IKO, we will not do any validation. IKO does not have any mandate to validate the information that is submitted by Corsia Focal Points. We are only gonna check if in case there are problems with, uh, you know, instead of putting a number, you insert it by accident, you know, some maybe letters. Um, although the system doesn't allow that, but still, you know, you never know. Maybe there is a maybe there is a bug somewhere. Or, you know, if if making sure that the information is reported in the correct format, uh, no validation, you know, whatsoever. So if the IKO super user uh, finds that there are some errors that need to be corrected, we will not do any changes ourselves. I care we will not be making any changes. However, what, we'll, what we will do is, we will change the status back to in progress. There will be again, another automated email notification to the Corsia focal point that there are, we found some problems with, uh, with, a, with a year record. And then the Corsia focal point and the state user can make further changes and again, uh, follow uh, the process to submit back to IKEO. However, as a result of uh, the checking of the IKEO super user, if no uh, problems with the format have been found and everything is as it should be, then the IKEO super user will lock this particular year record, and then this information and data will be used to produce the IKEO Corsia documents. This is extremely important for you to remember, uh, you know, this whole structure, because it is the basis of your work, uh, working with, with a CCR. And um, something else that I would like to also inform you is that uh, this particular session has been recorded and uh, will also provide access to uh, the, the PowerPoint presentations that we have prepared for this uh, remote training. So you will have access both to the recording and the presentations uh, so you can um, have a look at them. At the same time, I also would like to remind you that um, information that was provided in the presentation from uh, Jiyun in, in the first segment in relation to the overall process is summarized in uh, the leaflet, which is with the letter A, capital A, at the top right corner. And then you can see, you know, this uh, data flow process. Also, you can see in summary form the responsibilities of the different uh, users of uh, the CCR. In relation to CO2 emissions, the process is exactly the same as you see on, on your screen. And uh, what I would like to do right now is uh, basically move straight um, into, the, um, into how you do that. And uh, also again, remind you that we have another leaflet, the one with the letter D at the top right corner um, of the front page where we summarize all the information that we'll provide to you in the presentation over the next uh, 20 uh, minutes or so. So without any further ado, uh, let us go back into the CCR. So I'm gonna stop my presentation here and uh, actually I'm gonna log in again. Um, I'm gonna log out first and I'm gonna log back in again. So you have landed into the uh, CCR uh, web page, so you insert your information. And that's what you see on your screen. Um, I walked you through the various parts of your home page. What we're gonna focus on right now is uh, the report CO2 emissions. And you can access this specific part of the CCR by using the navigation menu on the left hand side and by clicking on the report CO2 emissions. When you do that, you land on a page that uh, it is, it should be empty, you know, for all your states. There should be, you know, as a first time that you are accessing this particular part of the CCR, you should not be seeing anything there, uh, no year records. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to create a year record. And to do that, you do it by clicking on ads and then quick ads just below it. So if you click on that, there will be a pop-up on your screen. 
uh, with two fields. The first one, you cannot change it. It's the name of your IKEA state. So you should be seeing there the name of your state. I see Somalia because I'm the Corsia focal point of Somalia. And the second field is reporting year. So we will do 2019. So you select 2019 and then you select create. Once you do that, the CCR creates this year record for your states. And now you can see it on your screen. So now you have your first year record, which relates to the CO2 emissions. Uh, your ICAO state again, uh, the reporting year is 2019. And as you can see over here, the data, the status of this year record is being set to in progress. And if you remember from my previous slide, in progress means now you can edit, you can add information in that uh, particular year record. So let's click on the pencil icon. And the moment that you do that, uh, what happens is you are open, now you have opened the year records which uh, corresponds to your ICAO state and the specific reporting year. So now what you will see on your screen is um, again the area of the CCR which relates to the uh, particular year record. You have four tabs. The first one provides some details. The second one is called CO2 emissions state pairs. The third one, CO2 emissions airplane operators. And the fourth one, CO2 emissions data journal. On your details, in the um, at the top part of your details tab, you will see the name of your state again, the reporting here. These are reads only fields. You cannot change them in any way. Once you have set uh, this, uh, these two values, you cannot change them. In the middle part of your screen, you will see another area which is called total CO2 emissions. And uh, on, and again, you have you, you don't you have to worry about this. This is information which is automatically updated for you. Specifically for 2019 and for 2020, you will only see one number here, which is the total CO2 emissions. This is calculated automatically for you based on information that you will insert in the second tab. And I will show you next how to do that on the CO2 emissions per or state per. Uh, all the other, you will see that there is NA, which means not applicable uh, for 2019. So there is no offsetting requirements for 2019. So these four areas, uh, they are uh, indicated as uh, not applicable. And of course, for 2019, the requirement that states have is to provide information on a state per basis. No information on European operators in terms of CO2 emissions. At the bottom part of your screen, you will see an area which is called data status. And this is where you actually change the status of this particular year record. For now, this has been set to in progress. And actually, you can see um, in the uh, top part of this uh, third box, a blue box which indicates that it's in progress and actually it also gives you information when this year record was created and by whom so you can keep track as well of uh, you know who changed who made changes uh, to uh, specific parts of the ccr i will come back to this one later on once we have insert information i can show you how you can use this uh, to change the status of um, a specific year record so the, the second tab is called CO2 emission state pairs. Again, since this is, you know, this is the, the first time you're creating a year record, this is empty. Uh, there is no information in it. And uh, before I show you how to insert information, I'm just gonna walk you through the other two tabs and then I will come back to the CO2 emissions for state pairs. The third tab is called CO2 emissions airplane operators. Uh, for 2019 and 20, you don't have to do anything in that particular one. Actually, you cannot do anything. You cannot add any um, airplane operators. You, you you forget about it basically for 2019, 2020. No information is needed there. The, uh, the fourth tab is called CO2 emissions data journal. And uh, this is again, how you track information of changes made to this particular year record. So you will see over here now there is only two actions that were taken when this particular uh, page was created and you say it was added on uh, the 13th of April 2020. That's my local time. 
Um, again, there's some, in, some basic information who created this particular record, uh, what was the role of that particular person. And um, also you will see that I, I created the record and now I am looking at it as well. So there is also a recording that I had. Um, I had a look at the record um, that I created on the 13th of April. And this, of course, you know, over time, you will see more and more entries in these journals uh, because, you know, once you make changes, then these changes will be reflected in the specific journal. So let's go back and see how we can insert information on CO2 emissions for specific state births. So let's, um, you know, add one state pair, and you can do this by clicking on add and then full add just below it. So if you click on full ad, then you get a web form, which looks like what you see on your screen. And you have basically four different fields that you need to fill in. First of all, you have to select the state pair. You have to define actually the state pair. Uh, and you define the state pair by selecting the departing states. So let's say, let's try to find, you know, this is from Somalia, let's say. So Somalia to... Um, let's say Albania. So we have our state pair. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to provide the actual CO2 emissions. So let's say this is, these are my emissions on this specific state pair. Please note that for CO2 emissions, they cannot be negative numbers. If you try to put their, let's say, you know, minus this number, then you're going to get a warning. That this, you know, the fields should be a positive number, should be between that value and that value. Um, what you see as stars over there means this is mandatory information. So you have to provide information um, between, you know, the departing state and the arrival state. Uh, so this mandatory information. Confidential data, however, is not a mandatory field which uh, means that you don't have to do anything here if this information is not confidential. If, however, the information is confidential, then you can click on the box there, and this information will be indicated as confidential in, in the CCR. Uh, one other thing to show you is that you cannot have any domestic pairs. For, so, for example, if instead of Albania, you try to put also, you know, Somalia here, then and you try to create that one, then it will it will give you a warning, an error, saying that from and to cannot have the same value. Please change. So the um, you can see that the CCR already does some checks for you. Uh, first of all, it checks that the numbers cannot be you know negative numbers. Um, also, what I mentioned earlier about you know making a mistake. So um, let's say that this number over here. Let's first of all change this one back to Albania. Uh, but let's say that, you know, this number, you know, by accident, you want to put like the zero maybe. But instead of zero, maybe you typed um, O. If you try to put a letter in where a number is supposed to be, then you're also going to get a warning that this field must be a number. And you cannot proceed. There are some things that um, the system will not allow you to proceed if you have this kind of mistakes in it. So if you change it back to zero, let's say, then now it accepts it as a number. Uh, so we have changed, uh, you know, back to Albania. We have uh, Somalia, Albania. We have uh, the CO2 emissions. We know this information is confidential. So let's now create um, our first entry into our year record. And the moment you create it, then it is saved. You have it now. It is uh, your first a uh, state pair from Somalia to Albania. These are your emissions. Um, of course, this uh, particular state pair is not subject to offsetting requirements for 2019 because there are no offsetting requirements for this specific year. And you have indicated this uh, state pair as confidential. So the depth of confidentiality, true means it is confidential. False means it is not uh, confidential. So this is done. This is all you had to do to create a state pair. Be mindful uh, that these are one-way state pairs. So it is all the flights from Somalia to Albania. 
However, as you all know, in most cases, there is also the return flights. So all the flights from Albania to Somalia, they have to be entered into a second state pair. And to do that, you follow exactly the same process again. So let's do it again, add, full add. Now we have our second state pair, so it'll be from Albania to Somalia. And the missions are whatever it is this time. And if, I guess, if um, the state pair Somalia to Albania was confidential, I imagine the opposite will be also true. But let's assume, you know, for this case, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, this particular, you know, state pair is not confidential, so you don't need to indicate anything there. You leave it, you know, as blank and you create. Now what you will see, um, you know, the CCR will do, will add one more state pair into your year records. And now you have your first two state pairs with uh, the corresponding CO2 emissions. And you can continue this process. You can manually insert information for as many state pairs as you have um, in for this uh, particular year. In some cases, however, you know, if if you only have maybe a limited number of uh, state pairs, maybe that's an acceptable way of, of doing it. However, in, in some cases, you may have a lot of airplane operators, you may have a lot of state pairs, um, and you also may have your own way of collecting information, and you are able to store information in, um, in, uh, in, 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 a, in a file, and then use this file to upload the information. Uh, this is allowed to, you, can, you are allowed to do this in the CCR by using another action which is at the top of the table here, which is called import CSV. You can import a file which is in a CSV format and CSV starts, stands for comma separate values uh, by you know, creating a CSV file with information needed and then uploading this information in the CCR. But before I, I show you how to do that, let's see what a CSV file would look like. So let's look at the file that we have over here. So this is a, a sample file and uh, a template file for CO2 emissions will be available for all of you to use. It's a very simple file. Although this has been opened with Excel, it is not an Excel file. Do not try to save this file as Excel because you will not be able to upload in the CCR. CCR only accepts CSV values. You can use Excel to um, edit this information, but you have to save it as, as a CSV file. So there are four columns. The first one is from, so the departing states, to the arrival states, the actual CO2 emissions in terms of CO2, and then indication whether this information is confidential or not. So this is, um, you know, a file that we have created, you know, for the purposes of uh, this particular um, training, just to show you how the system handles this kind of file. So let's go back to our year records. We go into tools and we import CSV. When we click that, uh, in the left part of your screen, you will see um, something that looks like this. It may not always be the same depending on what kind of browser you are using. Right now, actually, I'm using Firefox. So this is how Firefox implements the browsing, where basically you look, you, you try to locate where your file resides on your computer. So if you are using something else, if you're using Chrome, for example, or if you're using Edge, then this will be different on your screen, but the functionality is exactly the same. So for those of you that are using uh, Firefox, that's what you will see on the screen. Others of you using other web browsers, you will see something different, but the process is exactly the same. So if you click there on the browse, then you will uh, basically try to locate the folder, and then this is the file that I want to upload. So once you have found it, then click on upload. And what the CCR does is uh, it goes it reads all the information that is provided in the file and reproduces this information on your screen. Uh, the, um, what you see here now, if you remember, you know, the Excel file had only four columns, from, to, CO2, and confidential. 
what you see on your screen, these five columns, uh, there is a, another one which is called the records. You did not provide this and you don't have to worry about this. This is something that the system it does itself. The CCR creates this particular record because it needs to associate this specific state pair with a specific uh, state, with a specific year and uh, the status of, um, of, of the year record. So don't, have, don't worry about the, the first column, but the other four is what you provided in the CSV file. You check this information, make sure it is correct, that there are no problems, everything is there. So once you are satisfied that this is indeed the correct information you want to upload, you click on confirm and continue import. So once you do that, then the system will read the information and it will, if everything is okay, there are no problems with the information. It will give you, um, it will give you, it will tell you that the data has been imported successfully. And this indicates the end of the import process. So you can return back uh, to your CO2 emissions. And now you will see that you have a total of eight state pairs. Previously, if you remember, we did the first two, Somalia to Albania, Albania to Somalia. Uh, this where we inserted those manually and then we use the csv option to import six more state pairs and this is where the this information you can see the information we have two volatile russian federation russian federation to france and so on and so forth so this is a situation where everything is perfect there are no problems with the information with the data but again we're all humans we make mistakes and uh, there are a number of uh, mistakes that, um, that you know, the system can handle and can give you warnings. And uh, let me you know, tell you what kind of uh, mistakes you know, could be made. So for example, let's look in a situation where maybe the name of the state is not correct. So we have this CSV file. Uh, we have three state pairs, Italy to Spain, Spain, Comoros, Comoros to Korea. Now, I hope that you all appreciate that when we're talking about Korea, we have two Koreas in this world. And uh, by Korea, you know, the system doesn't have a state named Korea. Uh, there is, of course, uh, uh, the Democratic Republic of Korea and there is a Republic of Korea. And um, by, by Korea, it's, it's a wrong name. So this one is a, is a mistake. The intention was uh, to include Republic of Korea. But before we make any changes, uh, let's, try, let's see what happens if you try to import a file like this one into the system. So we'll go through the same process again. I'm gonna go into tools, import CSV. Uh, we're gonna try to find where our file is located. So this is where our file is. And now we'll upload it again. Uh, the CCR will read the information and now it will give you a slightly different um, message compared to what you saw earlier. So now it tells you that you have received three new CO2 emissions. Yes, it is three new. And it is referring to one new tools in the Excel file and ask you to review the data before import into the system. However, the way it stands right now on your screen, nothing can be imported. If you remember from earlier, there was a button over here which says, you know, uh, continue with the import process. Now there is no button, there's only cancel. And there's only cancel because the system has found that there are some problems with your, with the information you provided. And the problem is with the name of the state. You cannot do anything other than cancel this process go back into your CSV file, make the correction, and restart and reinitiate the import process. Uh, so you cannot make the, the change on the screen, but you have to go back to your CSV file and make sure that the name there is correct. Um, this particular um, warning error will be um, changed into the version one of the tool. We are working with our developer who have identified some of the warning errors are not um, very user-friendly. So they are making changes as we speak. Um, and in the version one of the tool, this particular warnings uh, will be modified to make them a bit more 
provide a bit more information to all of you to make sure that you understand better where the problems are. But what you have to do now is to cancel this import process, go back to your CSV file that we have over here. Uh, let's change this one into Republic of Korea. Save it. Yes. So now you can see it's the Republic of Korea, not Korea anymore. So now let's try to do the same thing again. Uh, let's uh, do import CSV. Again, same process. Open, upload. And now we have the, the CCR tells you that it has received three new CO2 emissions in the Excel file. Again, uh, this will be corrected. Uh, we have um, asked our uh, our developer to change this Excel because it, the system cannot accept Excel files. You can export in Excel, but you cannot import in Excel. Um, so it would be a CSV file. This could be correct as well in the version one. Uh, again, ask you to review the information and now you can confirm and continue with the import process. So now you could click on that. This new uh, three state pairs have been imported successfully. So now you return to report CO2 emissions. And now you have added three more state pairs uh, to your year records. And actually, let me increase the size of the page and make them 20. So we can see all of them. And you can see that now you have Italy, Spain, Spain, Comoros, and Comoros to Republic of Korea. So the system, as you can see, it has uh, what is usually referred to as business rules in built in. Uh, and these uh, business rules, basically, they try to catch some of the obvious uh, mistakes in the data. As I mentioned before, no negative numbers, no letters where numbers were supposed to be, uh, making sure you have uh, the right, the name of the state is correct. Um, you know, very, very basic things like that, uh, just to make sure that uh, the information you upload makes sense into the system and can be stored in an appropriate, an appropriate way. So other mistakes that uh, could be made is in relation to, uh, for example, uh, by mistake having a domestic pair um, in a CSV file. So that's another example. Uh, you have three again state pairs, Japan, South Africa, South Africa, Canada. And then you have a third one, which is Canada, Canada. And this could be a genuine mistake. Um, it could be, you know, while you are putting all the information together, uh, by mistake, instead of uh, maybe putting, uh, um, I don't know, Cambodia, maybe for example, you put Canada, or uh, or it could be that you know by mistake in while you were compiling all the information, somehow accidentally you inserted a domestic pair as part of your international initiatives. This kind of uh, situation again um, can be addressed through the CCR, and I'm going to show you how the CCR handles this kind of um, uh, situation. So again, let's try to import a CSV file that has one domestic pair inside and try to upload this. So the system has received three new state pairs. Um, and again, after checking the information, you know, this, this particular, this first stage is just to make sure that the name of the countries are correct. Uh, you know, some you know, very basic information. So although, you know, it, 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 it accepts as a state pair, it doesn't give you any error here. Let's see what happens if you try to import this information. Okay, what the system did, it says that the data was imported successfully. And actually this is partly true. And again, that's another thing that we have identified with our developer and they are making some changes in terms of um, the, uh, the warning errors that you're going to see, because the system, although it says that it has actually imported successfully, it hasn't imported, it hasn't imported successfully the, the domestic state pair. So if you go back into your uh, year records, you see now you have 13 state pairs. Uh, the two new ones are Japan, South Africa, and South Africa to Canada. But what the system did was to exclude the Canada-Canada state pair. The way 
again, this is access. You have access to a training version of the CCR, and uh, you know we are still going through some uh, final testing. So as I mentioned, we are working with our developer, and uh, the system will identify those problems and will give you warnings, so you will know what uh, you know was done. Um, in terms of uh, you know not inserting importing this kind of information, so you, you from a user perspective, you are also going to get some um, you know informative information about what the system has done with your uh, with your import information. So the last thing that I would like to demonstrate to you is uh, what happens if um, information is not correct, and by not correct meaning uh, not providing information that the system expects. For example, in this particular CSV file, you have five state pairs. In uh, all, in the fifth, in the fifth one from Japan to Kenya, uh, you have zero emissions. The system cannot handle zero emissions. Zero emissions is not an acceptable figure. You, um, if it is zero, then you're not supposed to have this particular state pair. So the minimum value that the system can accept is 0 0.01. Um, and this is 0 0.01 ton uh, of uh, CO2. So if you try to import uh, this particular file with zero emissions, then you will get another kind of a warning from the system. So let's try to see what happens if you try to do that. Again, the same process. We locate our file. And let's see what happens now. So again, uh, we have received five new state pairs in the file. Please review. You have reviewed the information. Um, you have you did not, you know, for whatever reason, you were absent-minded, you did not see that there is zero over there, and you confirm and continue to import. What the system does is that again, now it gives you um, an error message in terms of the row number five and says value is blank or duplicate or validation failed. And now you can actually see what happened by downloading what is called the error sheet. So if you click on um, this particular link, then you can open in Excel and you will see what the system did when it was trying to import the information. So what happened was successful uh, imports of four state pairs, but the fifth one was not uh, imported because there was an error in the CO2 emissions. So now if you go back into the CCR and you return to report CO2 emissions, um, what you will see is now you have 17 uh, state pairs. Then you have four new ones that were uh, reported successfully, but not uh, the fifth one which had zero emissions in um, uh, as a value. So this is how the system um, identifies some of the errors in your um, import files. Again, as you probably have noticed, uh, you can have multiple CSV files. You can, you know, use you, you can use the CSV files as many times as you want. So you can have like a combination of manual entry and more automated entry uh, using CSV files. Uh, you can uh, filter this information that you see on your screen, you can sort it. Uh, but if you click um, on any of uh, the headings of the table from to CO2 emissions, then the values will be um, sorted in ascending or descending order. And um, also what you can do, you can actually delete some of those um, state pairs if you accidentally have inserted them. So let's say, for example, that this particular one, Tuval to Russian Federation was inserted accidentally. What you can do is you can click on the down arrow next to the pencil icon, and you can uh, use a delete option in the menu. Once you do that, you have to confirm your action, especially with deletions. Uh, the system is very, uh, very particular about that. So uh, it asks you to confirm that you want to delete it. And if you are 100% sure that you want to delete it, you can confirm the deletion. And then this particular state pair will disappear from your uh, from your year record. Um, so now you have 16 pairs, where before you had uh, 17, and, and this is what you have over here. There is one more option in um, that you can do in terms of bulk updating 
the, the data. Uh, what you see on your screen over there, it's also a bulk delete where you can mark a number of these entries, a number of these rows, and you can delete all of them in one go. Uh, this is not something which is advisable. And actually, that's one thing that we have um, um, asked, talked with our developer to disable this from this, um, uh, from this version of the CCR. But there is another option where you can update um, one specific part of the information you provide. And this relates uh, basically, um, let me show you if you click on what happens, it's in terms of confidential information. So what you can do is, let me go back. Let's say that, you know, for example, let's look at the confidential data over here. You have um, Somalia, Albania, this is uh, confidential, Albania, Somalia, not confidential and so on and so forth. Let's say, for example, uh, you have these one, two, three, four, uh, state pairs, they are all uh, not confidential, so you can click on all four of them. And then you can go to the bulk update and you can change the confidential, confidential data to true. So now these, val these specific state pairs are indeed confidential and you can update them. So you don't have to do one by one, but you can select how many of your state pairs are confidential, and you can uh, bulk update them using this specific action. Um, you can you can revert back if you want. You know you can you can change this. You can go back and forth. But let's go back there now. You see now that all these that you know before they were false and now they are true. So you have made this change into by just doing one click instead of going to each individual one and changing the uh, the specific. Um, uh, status in terms of confidentiality. So once you have done all of this work and you have inserted all your state pairs for 2019, then you can go back to the details page um, of your year records. And now this is where you can see actually what I told you before that this uh, you have total CO2 emissions and this is a value which has been updated for you automatically taking into account all the information on the state pairs that you provided in the second tab. So again, uh, this information is, um, you know, you, you don't have to provide this information, the system already does the additions for you. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that once you create a year record, you cannot delete it. So, you know, you cannot go back, for example, to, you know, report CO2 emissions here to where you can, there is no delete option. So if you click on the uh, on the down arrow next to the pencil icon uh, to your states, you will see you can view the information, you can edit the information, you can add a state pair, that's a shortcut, so you can add a state pair from uh, in this particular year record, but you cannot delete it. Um, if you create a year record by mistake, you can leave it empty and you can leave that in progress and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but you cannot delete it. If, for whatever reason, you want to, to have it deleted, then you have to you have to ask IKEA to do it for you. You cannot do it yourselves. But within the year record, that I, as I showed you, if you have like a specific state pair, a specific state pair can be deleted if you want to delete it. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now, from the details part, the last thing that I want to show you on uh, this particular screen is how to change the status of um, this year record. When we created the year records, the status was set to in progress, and that's where we can add edit information. But, you know, we are in a situation right now that we have edited and we have added all the information we wanted, and now the information is complete. As a state user and as a Corsia focal point, you can change the data status from in progress to complete. As a state user, you will not have the option of ready. Ready is to submit to ICAO. So all the state users will only see two options. I see three because I am the Corsia focal point, if you remember. I am logged in as a Corsia focal point of Somalia. So me as a Corsia focal point, I have the three options in progress, complete and ready. So once 
I have completed the insertion of the information. You know, I'm confident that you know, I don't have anything else. I click on complete and save. Every time you change the status of the information, you have to click save. Otherwise, this action will not be um, will not be saved into the system. So you click save, and let's see what happens. Now your your year records again Somalia 2019. The status has been changed to complete. And once you have done this, then you will also see who initiated this action. So it went from in progress to complete um, at on 13th of April 2020. Uh, this is my local time, and this is uh, the state user who actually uh, did that. So now, if this action was initiated by a state user, then at the Corsia focal point we had received an email message to review the information. So the Corsia focal point reviews the information, and if the Corsia focal point is satisfied that there is no need for any more changes, then the Corsia focal point can change the status from complete to ready. So if we do that, let's see what happens. The first thing that happens is you are getting a confirmation pop-up asking you to make sure that you want to save this. Because the moment that you save, that you change the status to ready, then this will make your year record read only. And of course, an email message will be sent to the ICAO super user that this information has been now submitted uh, to ICAO. So if you are confident that this is your information, then you click on OK. And then uh, what the CCR does is basically automatically changes the status of this year record to ready and informs the ICAO super user that Somalia records uh, for the year 2019. Now, if you go back to your year record, first of all, um, I hope you noticed that before here there was a pencil icon and the pencil icon indicates a record that can be edited. Now, the icon is an eye icon. An eye icon indicates that you can only view this particular year record. So if you click on the eye icon, let's see what happens. Again, you go in into your year records, but now you have a warning at the top, which says this record is read only and no changes can be made. So if you want to make changes, you have to contact ICAO to change the status back to in progress for you as the Corsia focal point to make uh, changes. So uh, by read only, it means that um, you, you cannot change anything anymore. So if you go to your state pairs, uh, if you try to make any changes into the state pairs, the CCR will not allow you to do. You can see everything is now an eye icon. So if you click on that, you try and change something, you cannot do anything. Everything is locked. Everything is in read-only state. Um, that's all I, I wanted to uh, show you from uh, this part of, uh, the, um, of the CCR, how to report information, how to upload information and how to submit information to ICAO. So basically, I walked you through all different steps from how to create a year record um, all the way to uh, uploading information either manually or uh, using a, an automated you know, feature which is called input CSV file, and then how to change the status of the year record to submit information to ICAO. Um, always, I just want to remind you again that the moment that you make a change to the status of the year record, you have to click save at the bottom of the screen. Otherwise, the action will not be um, will not be completed, and the status will not change, and ICAO will never be informed uh, that the uh, uh, data has been submitted uh, to it uh, for uh, further checking. Uh, for 2019, as I mentioned, you know, this is the first time th that you are submitting information to ICAO. Uh, so you will not um, have any other option other than to create a new year record by the quick ad that I showed you earlier. However, from 2020 onwards, you have a second option if you want to create a year record. 
And uh, this option is by copying a previous year. So let's say, for example, you are a year from now, you have collected information from your airplane operators for 2020, and you are ready to report CO2 emissions for the year 2020. You have already done, you are finished with the 2019. This has already been submitted to ICAO. It has been checked, it's, everything is fine. So you are now in 2020, a year from now. Um, and let's see what happens if you um, actually, instead of adding a year record as before, you copy from another reporting year. So there are two options. One is quick add. If you click quick add, then you're gonna follow exactly the same process that I showed you before. If you click on copy from, then it's a slightly different process. So let's see what happens if you do that. Again, for 2019, you will not have this option because you will not have any year record available um, in, your, in your account. From next year, this will be available to you. So from next year, let's say you want to copy from the previous year, 2019, and now you want to create a record for 2020. So let's create this one. What the CCR will do is will create a new year record and it will copy not everything, but a lot of information from, um, from, your, uh, from the 2019 uh, year record. Um, sorry for it's taking too long, usually it doesn't. Um, probably my internet is a bit slow. So now you have your year record 2020, uh, and you also have, you will notice here, you have a uh, number 16, which represents the number of state pairs. So it has copied your state pairs, but it has not copied the actual emissions. So you have exactly the same number and exactly the same state pairs as before. So you have Somalia to Albania, Albania to Somalia, Russia Federation to France, etc., and so on and so forth. But all of those do not have CO2 emissions associated with them. And also, there is no indication of whether this is confidential or not. So what you have to do in this case, you have to go individually into each one of those state pairs and add information on CO2 emissions and an indication of confidentiality, if uh, so needed. Uh, one of the things that we have pointed out to our developer, this is a mistake. Also for 2020, uh, the subject of safety requirements will be indicated as not applicable, not as no, which means that is not subject to offsetting requirements. Um, this, uh, this is a mistake in uh, this training version of the CCR, but this will be corrected uh, in the version one. So if you go on now to insert information on CO2 emissions, uh, you click on uh, the pencil icon again, you, um, you, know, you have your state pair, you just enter your information, whatever the values are, uh, whether it is confidential or not, and then at the bottom you save. And now your uh, your uh, year record has been updated with this new information, and you're going to have to go to every single of those state pairs to you know, add the CO2 emissions and also indication of the confidentiality. Um, again, if it is a manageable number of state pairs, then this may be an option for you. But again, if you have hundreds or maybe thousands of state pairs, then uh, maybe that's not the right approach. You may follow what did before, you create a new year record and you upload information using a CSV file or manually or something different. But again, it's an option that you have um, if you want to use it. But again, from, from next year, it is not for 2019. So I will stop here um, and then uh, I'll see if there are any questions uh, you may have. Um, I, I, I imagine that some of them have been answered already. Uh, but if not, then maybe I can I can answer them. Um, there was one question about reporting CO2 emissions after the emissions have been verified by the verification body. Yes, this is correct. The information 
that uh, you are supposed to upload in the CCR is based on the emission, the verified emission report from the operator and the verification body that you will receive. So uh, you uh, you need to wait for a verified CO2 emissions report to be received by you, and then you, you process it, and then you upload the information in the CCR. Thank you, Stelius. Um, so yeah, um, during my presentation, if you have any questions about Stelius' presentation, please feel free to use the chat function, and I'll I, I'll try to answer or uh, hand back to Stelius for him to uh, to, cons uh, to to answer you. So uh, finally, this is the last presentation for today. I know there uh, there has been a lot of new information um, given to you, so um, I'll try to make it short and sweet. Uh, but uh, you know, if you have any questions whatsoever uh, for the first segment or or anything you know CO two related uh, CO two reporting or service requests, please feel free to reach out to us either through email or uh, with the, using the chat function. So, um, so the the final presentation is about uh, submitting the service request that uh, Staley has shown you before um, in the navigation panel. So, as you can see here at the at the very bottom of the navigation panel is the uh, the service uh, request. Um, as Staley has mentioned, um, only the Corsia focal point can see this menu. So, if you're a state user, you cannot submit anything and you cannot you don't really even have an access to the service request um, this uh, you, you won't see this uh, option in your navigation menu um, so if you click the service request um, sort of um, for you to submit a service request to let's begin what is service request um, so it's a so when you encounter issues regarding CCR so you may be able like you may uh, look for some info um, some answers or information um, then you can use the help section the the question mark um, at the the top right of the screen but uh, service request is not about it it's it's rather when you have a certain request from ICAO uh, when you need to resolve some issues with the CCR. For example, you have uh, sort of accidentally changed the year record status to ready, although you are not prepared for it, um, or you realize an error after you submitted the report by changing the status to ready, um, uh, and uh, you want ICAO to release that year record status and, and change it back to in progress status so that you can revise the information. Um, so this is when you sort of um, use the service request. So it's a set of predefined requests for assistance that requires assistance from ICAO, uh, ICAO super user related to the CCR. Um, so you have to provide uh, the, the information, the background information for ICAO to take uh, you know, further action basically. Um, there, are, there are different types of requests that are available. Um, as, as mentioned here, it's a predefined set of requests. So I'll go through um, each sort of different um, requests in more in detail in the following slides. Um, as mentioned, only Corsia Focal Point, the one person from each state, can create search, uh, service requests from a state to minimize any confusion or mix of communication from the state to ICAO. So creating a service request is not really very different from creating another year record. So you click the service request uh, navigation panel, add, and then um, you know in the in when you add it, there will be a pop-up um, message, and then from the pop-up uh, drop-down sort of menu, you choose what you want to select. So there are different types, as I mentioned, um, that that I'm gonna sort of. Um, as I'm going to present you in the following slide, but uh, unlike other reporting areas, you know, you don't choose a year. This time, it's you have to provide, you know, background information to ICAO, what uh, what type of service request uh, you want ICAO to address. So at the bottom, there's descriptions. So you can provide, you know, more sort of background information, but you choose not the year, but the type of service request you want ICAO to address. So um, there are six at the moment. Um, again, you know, CCR is sort of, uh, we are shaping the CCR right now. We are doing the fine tuning, but you know, there, there may be some additional service request types, but at the moment, there are six different types of service requests in the CCR, in the current CCR design. The first one is data upload request. 
So, um, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen at, at all, but uh, suppose there is some error in the uh, in the CCR system, it's, it's a new system. So, you know, there may be some mistake from the developer side and whatnot. So you as a course of focal point cannot somehow create a year record. Um, so, you know, there's a technical glitch, you cannot create a year record, you've tried and, and if, and you've already compiled, you know, CO10 emissions information or air, uh, operator information and whatnot that is needed to be reported, but you just don't, you cannot just simply create a year record. What you can do is, um, request a service, uh, you know, request ICAO to take, in, take a look into it by creating a service request and in, in, and uh, include, upload the data that you want to import in the, you know. So ICAO can just simply sort of create the year record and upload that information that you have provided um, in the CCR through the service request. So this is just to sort of facilitate in the case where you cannot, uh, you have a data that you want to, in, to um, include, you just cannot create the year record. So, um, um, in this case, if you want to use this data upload request, obviously you have to upload the data and um, there will be a, a um, when you try to do that, there will be a, um, a function that prompts you to, you know, in, uh, upload the file. So, um, you, the service request is only to accommodate possible error in the system and uh, and that of course a focal point cannot upload the year record. If there's no error in the system, obviously it is it's uh, we are not expecting the course of focal point to you know create a service request um, and ask ICAO to upload it. If there's no uh, error in the system, it should be the course of focal point who creates the information and uploading the information and and if, and and also um, sending or submitting that information to ICAO. So even when a situation happens that, you know, the error record couldn't be created, ICAO super user may create the error record by, you know, through the service request, but um, that submission of error record should still be from the Corsia focal point. So the error record um, may be created from the, again, the error record may be created from the ICAO super user, but you are the person who has to change the status from in progress to complete to ready to submit to ICAO. Uh, the very fact that ICAO helped the state to create the year record is just to, you know, uh, to find a V way from this technical glitch. And, and, and there shouldn't be no expectation, there shouldn't be any expectation from the course focal point that because ICAO, of course, uh, ICAO super user has created this year record, that it is, you know, uh, automatically ready status. No, um, we are, um, course your focal point still has to review the information and change the status to ready when, when, when that year record is indeed ready. So the second uh, service request um, is the uh, release data uh, with status ready. So as mentioned in the previous slide uh, or pre previous sl presentations, um, suppose that a Corsia focal point finds error in the data right after the data has been submitted to ICAO. So by so you as a Corsia focal point, you just change it the status to ready and then realize that, oh no, actually I needed to revise, you know, um, you know, delete one entry or something like that. So in this case, service requests can be submitted to uh, request a release of such um, information from ICAO before ICAO sort of reviews uh, or, or valid uh, reviews for format correctness. So if processed, the data status will change from ready to back to in progress so that the course of focal point uh, can revise the information as needed. Um, the third one is even um, third one is unlock submitted data. So this is you know after the ready information after it is processed by ICAO. So ICAO has validated the data by not validate the information itself, but ICAO has already checked the format correctness and um, couldn't find any format error. So say ICAO has already changed it or locked that information. Um, after this, course of focal points suddenly finds an error in the, you know, in the information that they have provided, or there is, you know, a new information that they didn't know, say, you know, that happens. In this case, what 
uh, what can be done is, you know, of course, a focal point can submit this unlock submitted data um, request, service request, um, so that this locked data can be unlocked again um, uh, to, to in progress status. Again, as I mentioned in my first slide, uh, in my first presentation um, this morning, that um, if the if the locked data has already been used for calculation or publication, such as you know total sector sectoral CO2 emissions or sector's growth factor, no adjustment will be made. Um, it's just for the sake of um, archiving and and uh, for reference that 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 information has uh, will be unlocked and then uh, you know revised, but no adjustment will be made to the, this calculation from IKO side. Um, the, the last two is to inform or flag a change in the status. So the first one is to change or inform ICAO of a change in the Corsia focal point of a state. Um, however, this feature is only for the Corsia focal point to give heads up to ICAO to, for information purposes only. So ICAO will not take any action on this basis. ICAO, um, uh, you know, an official state letter has to be sent to ICAO through um, by a, you know, a, a authorized uh, authority that uh, that the course of focal point is changed. Um, without that official sort of communication, we won't take that information and then sort of uh, change or understand the course of focal points has indeed been changed. Um, this is, you know, it's only for the system for information purposes only. And we will sort of thank you for providing that information in advance, but we're still going to be waiting for an official communication through state letter because this, uh, this uh, informing through CCR won't be considered as an official um, act. Just like that, change of participation status, say your state wants to join Corsia um, from voluntary status, uh, voluntary phase, a uh, pilot phase, you know, first phase, we would love it, but we cannot take any action based on that. We cannot take any action based on that notification through CCR. An official letter, official um, communication has to come that this state, state A, wants to volunteer. Uh, to participate in Corsia. So uh, just like the change of Corsia focal point status, both uh, functions with, uh, you know, there's a star, uh, red star there. These are for information only. We get that information um, through the state and sort of, you know, ICAO may prepare for a future notification, but there won't be any action taken on the basis of the, these two requests. These are only for information only. The last uh, service request type is pretty straightforward. It's other. You know, uh, we have sort of uh, pre try to predefine all the possible sort of service request types that may we need uh, that we may need to address, but there may be some uh, something else that we haven't thought about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, including say a nomination of state user um, from Corsia focal point. A Corsia focal point can nominate a state user. Um, via email, we prefer that. But uh, in case you know the the course of focal point sees need to uh, nominate person um, and and sort of inform ICAO through CCR, you can do so by using this other not spe not specified and mention that you know we want uh, as me as a course of focal point, I want to nominate these account uh, these people as a state user and you know it's, i will send you another email but you know i'm just informing you through ccr etc cetera, etc cetera. so this um, other type is to sort of accommodate that situations like that that we haven't sort of couldn't foresee or, or you know uh, for now um so as mentioned earlier because service request is a bit different from other creating year records you have to provide additional not notes or comments um in the description field so that ICAO can understand you know what uh, what is the issue that you're having so say you know you want to unlock a record or a year record or you want to provide uh, you want to upload a data etc 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 so you have to provide a additional sort of comment um or description for for us to better understand your situation and and be able to accommodate um as needed 
Um, just like the data status, there are five status uh, for service requests as well. Um, uh, there are new, closed, more information needed, ongoing, and withdrawn. When a new re request is created, um, new service request is created, um, its status is automatically listed as new. So something like in progress, um, default status is new. Um, Course focal point can change the status to withdrawn if um, if that issue has been resolved. Say you thought there was a new information, but realize that you know um, the ear uh, the ear record that I've submitted is indeed correct, so I don't need to change anything. So I'm just withdrawing. So say if that happens, you can just simply withdraw it uh, from the system by changing the status from new to withdrawn. Um, other status, on the other hand, uh, cannot be changed by the uh, by the course of focal point. It can only be changed by the IKO super user. So other closed, IKO super user is the only person who can close a service request. More information needed, you know, straightforward. When there is more information needed uh, from IKO side um, to better understand what this service request is about, et cetera, et cetera, then uh, IKO super user can change the status uh, to more information needed so that so that the course of focal point receives an email notification uh, an automated email notification will be sent and then course of focal point will you know know that oh, so ICAO needs more information so I, I can provide further information um, to uh, to facilitate that so that's another sort of option um, or a status that uh, that is available um, when the the status is closed by IKO super user, so you know the the request is stressed, um, so there's no further action needed, etc. Then IKO super user will close this um, the service request by changing the status to close. Um, um, just like any other ear records and whatnot, um, a closed service request is not going to be deleted from the system. It will be archived for future reference. So a withdrawn um, service request or closed service request or any you know, uh, service request for that matter is archived in the system um, or is available in the system, but uh, for data uh, traceability. And, and integrity purposes. So when uh, everything is resolved, the status will be closed by a KO super user and, and archived for future reference. So this is pretty much it for the service request. I think it's been uh, pretty straightforward. You know, it's to facilitate uh, situations that uh, is not, you know, that um, there's, say there's a mistake made or technical glitches is happening, etc. where, uh, you know, there should be a communication from the from the course of focal point to IKEA super user, then you can use a service request to to facilitate that. Um, so I'm gonna try to address any questions if you have any uh, about service requests and also the CO2 emissions and or any uh, for for today's uh, session. And if there is none, I will um, hand back to uh, Tetsuya if he's his still here or still use uh, for the final remark. Um, I see that so oh so the I think I've sort of addressed a uh, first question from Vitan um, that uh, the how to nominate a state user. We would prefer to receive an email address, an email uh, from the Corsair Focal Point um, through CCR at ICAO.int um, uh, to nominate a state user, um, but you could you could also use uh, ICAO uh, the service request to uh, and and put other um, as a service request type to nominate a state user. Uh, the second question from uh, Bitten is: Are the Corsia Online Spreadsheet and Corsia Toronto app the same thing? No. So the Corsia online spreadsheet was active, is still active, um, but that was because there was no CCR, you know, that was operative. So um, when this CCR, an actual CCR is launched officially, the Corsia online spreadsheet won't be functioning anymore. So the information that you have provided to the Corsia online spreadsheet will be um, imported to CCR. Um, you don't have to worry about that. But 
uh, system-wise, this, uh, this, you know, is the, I mean, the, the one that you have tested, you are doing right now is a training version, but what you will see um, as the official sort of uh, CCR, that will be the official CCR and the online spreadsheet was more for like a temporary uh, measure that will um, disappear. If you have any further question, uh, please. Okay, so I think there is more. Um, so uh, where can we find the CSV template? Uh, thanks for the question. That's re really great. Um, at the moment, they the templates are not available on the CCR website. Uh, we're aware of it. Um, the developers will change uh, or, or or create a, a create a. Um, a place where you can download the templates. Um, so yes, at, at the moment, there's no template, uh, CSV template available uh, per reporting areas, but it will be available in the actual CCR version. Um, any further questions? If uh, Tetsuya is still here, uh, before Tetsuya. before, before Tetsuya, uh, I can I can take the floor just um, um, very quickly. I would like to uh, again remind you that we are recording this session, and uh, after we have uh, finished with uh, all the remote training, then what we're going to do is we're going to provide you links to where you can uh, watch it again if you want just to be reminded of uh, what we uh, told you this uh, in this last three hours. Um, at the same time, with that email message, we will also going to send you um, uh, homework that you can do for the CO2 emissions. We have prepared an exercise uh, for you to complete, uh, which has two parts. One is to manually enter information into the CCR, into a year record uh, for CO2 emissions, and also to use the template for CO2 emissions to upload information uh, with a you know, CSV file. And uh, we will do this um, in the next, you know, five, 10 days, um, something like that. Uh, once we are ready to provide you all the information with the links and, um, and everything else. So we'll give you enough time to do it. And again, any questions you may have um, in the future, be more than happy to try and answer them by sending us an email message to ccr at ikeo.int. Thank you. And Tetsuya, I don't know if you would like to say a few things for the, for the end. I'm just quick to here again and thank you, Stelios and Jayun, for running a great show for three hours. And I hope, and again, <clears throat> of course, the thank you for everybody, all the participants. I think we have like a 20 people in this room for your time and concentration with a good questions, the technical question that, that uh, we could clarify amongst ourselves. I think, I think I, I really hope that uh, we could have a good session with the understanding, good understanding of what the CCR is. And I hope that everybody has a good impression of that this TT, uh, CCR to be a practical, sort of a simple tool, not, com not, com not overwhelming or scary one. And I really, that as I mentioned, just mentioned by Stereos and Jayun, that I really, we really strongly encourage you to continue to run by playing with this CCR testing version, we are going to prepare, we are going to send you a sort of homework that you can uh, further to use the, the CCR with some practical data. You already received the leaflets, the newly the CCR delegated leaflets that you can familiarize, you can put yourself, yourself to be familiar, more familiar with the use of the CCR. Uh, we are going to put the video recording of this session so that you can go back and learn more on exactly how to use it again. Um, and of course, we continue to provide um, necessary support. And the more that we get getting, we get closer to the official launch of the CCR, again, that we are still using the testing training version of the CCR. We are targeting to have official uh, launch of the, the CCR in May. And by the time that, of course, we are continue, we are going to continue to to contact the, uh, the focal point, Corsia focal points, to make things happen. 
Again, thank you so much for your time. And the, we really hope that the current difficult situation for everybody to be recovered soon so that we can see each other in the face-to-face -face, uh, COSIA regional seminar in a later date this year. So until then, um, see you and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye to everybody. Thank you so much for your participation.